is going to be about working with P percent confidence intervals. That is, you get to choose the value P. In order to get to this, we'll revisit the definition of quantiles. Then we'll revisit what we did to choose T star for 95% confidence intervals. That is, I already gave you the code to choose this value that specifies how many standard errors you want to move up and down from your best guess of the population mean. We'll revisit that. We'll draw some pictures on paper. Uh, I'm going to start calling this paper. <laughs> it's also my whiteboard. I don't know how to refer to it. Um, anyway, we'll go with that. And then we'll do an example in R. So let's just get to quantiles. I want you to recall that quantiles define a value that puts some percentage of, now it's either data on the sample side or its area under a curve when you're looking at a distribution in terms of the population to the, and now it puts that, er that area or all the data in some direction. Do you recall what direction? Hit pause really quick and ask yourself, what direction, in what direction are quantiles defined? To the left. Quantiles define a value that puts some area to the left. So you might say, here is a value. Let's call it, you know what? It's a little too narrow down there. So we're just going to get rid of this and try to start on a new page. you've got a normal distribution and you're interested in, let's say, Q75, that is the 75th uh, quantile, then that number Q75 puts 75% of the area to the left of it. That's me attempting to shade there. Okay. So we're going to build from this picture. We're going to build from this picture to revisit how we found T star. It's basically the same picture. But instead of focusing on just area to the left, we're going to use quantiles to help us establish area in between two numbers. The two numbers we're interested in are negative T star and positive T star. And we want to get in between those two values 95%. So we're going to ask R to help us find this value T star such that negative T star all the way up to positive T star captures 95% of the area under the normal distribution. At this point, it would be beneficial to you to remind yourself, why are we focusing on the normal distribution or this new fandangled thing, T distribution, for which I'm calling this T star? It would be a good minute here to pause again and try to remind yourself, what grand theorem leads us to the central limit theorem? What are the practical implications of using the central limit theorem? And how does that get us to this thing, the T distribution. Okay, so I'm going to continue on assuming that you've already paused and thought to yourself. So we're going to use R, R's function Q for quantile, T for T distribution, and we're going to plug in two numbers such that uh, negative T star is really defined to, with, in terms of area to the left. So what we're going to want down here is 2.5%. In order to get that in R, we have to put in 0 0.025. And that will get us the value negative T star. 
And in order to get the value positive T star, remember T star is defined by area to the left. So not only is there 95% area to the left of T star, but there's also this 2.5%. So 95 plus 2.5 gets us up to 97.5, and hence into R you put 97.5, I mean 0.975. And then you specify the degrees of freedom as your sample size minus one. And this gets for us a vector of the two values, negative T star and positive T star. So this is what we're going to try to generalize. We're going to try to generalize this such that we can pick any percentage we want in between these two values, negative T star and positive T star. Let's give it a go. So we're just going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to draw my, it could be a T distribution, it could be a normal distribution. They look basically the same, just with different uh, thicknesses of the tails. We are interested in values T uh, positive and negative T star, such that in between those values, you are interested in some percentage. Now here, I would normally query the class and ask you all, shout out a number, and somebody would give me some percentage, so, but we can't do that right now. So you all have to imagine that somebody in the class picked 80%. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I'm making up numbers here. And that we're going to go based on this, um, whoops, Percentage in the middle, 80%, as if we wanted an 80% confidence interval. So what we do is realize that the value negative T star is defined in terms of area to the left of it. Now, if there's 80% in the middle and there's 100% under the total uh, distribution, then there's going to be 20% in both tails or just 10% in one tail. So you'd use the function qt, and you then put as the first argument to the function qt a vector, which you're going to create with the function c, and you're going to put into it 0 0.1 for 10%. And in the next element of this vector, you're going to put in the percentage to the left of the value t star. Now remember, to the left of T stars, both this 80% and this 10% for a total of 90%. And then you'll specify your degrees of freedom for whatever they are for a particular problem. And that line of code will give you a vector T star. So really, whatever percentage you want in the middle here has to show up specified by these two values here and here. And the way you want to think about it is you want equal amounts of area on both tails. Whatever percentage of area to the left of negative T star should be the same percentage of area to the right of positive T star. And the difference between these two numbers should give you the percentage you want. That's going to enable for us you to choose any percentage you want in the middle. Now, a word of caution, 80% is pretty much as low as you should go. We want to be confident. We don't want to trade too much area in the tails for an uh, incredibly narrow interval. We want our intervals to generally be something between 80 and 98% confident. And in fact, the most common choices are 80%. 90%, 95%, and 98% confident. So we have done examples on 80% and 95%. I'm going to leave it to you to create examples of code like this QT function for 90% and 98%. In the meantime, we're going to try to run that line of code in R and see what we get. So over here in R Studio, we're going to continue.
playing around with the idea of an 80% confidence interval. For let's say degrees of freedom equal to 100, that's as if we had a sample size of 101. And we're going to store that into a variable that we name t star. And indeed, that's not so difficult. We just got the number 1.29 out, both positive and negative versions of it. So if we were doing an example, which we're not really right now, you'd have mu hat plus t star. And the benefit of having the negative and the positive versions of t star is you could just go plus t star times your standard error. If you were doing an example, you would just use t star like this, and your confidence interval would kind of fall out of that. And then it would be up to you to interpret that confidence interval, keeping in mind the literal definition of the p percent in context of the data. You'd have to interpret the confidence interval in context of the data, keeping in mind the literal definition of that percentage. And last but not least, don't forget the units. Anytime you interpret a confidence interval, you always need to specify units. So this video was a quick walkthrough of how to pick out whatever percent confidence interval you want. It really comes down to this choice of these two numbers right there. It's not so difficult once you get the hang of it, but you really should practice with 90 and 98% uh, values so that you can better understand how these numbers go in. And in fact, why don't you put either the 90 or 98 percent, uh, the code for a 90 or 98 percent confidence interval into your course notes.